my shop. Today I'm taking on a challenge that Hugh from Wouldn't It Be Nice put out in December to make a clock uh, in the month of January. So before the end of the month of January I want to get this clock made. Um, I had this idea actually before I realised that Hugh had put out a challenge to make a clock using parts from a bike. So here I have the chain and the pedal piece, the piece that the pedal goes on to. So I thought they were quite cool and I thought that there was an opportunity there to make something on the lathe because they're round. Um, this could wrap around the edge somehow and this could obviously be the center um, of the clock and I think it might be quite cool. So I have, like I say, I've got this piece of uh, walnut, which again I love turning walnut. It does actually have a bit of a crack, it's got the pith right on the edge. So we're going to have to see how that works out, but I think it'll be okay. Even if I have to use a little bit of CA, that's fine. Um, I'm going to take this over to the mansaw, get it cut round, and then we'll get it mounted on the lathe, and we'll start making a clock for the challenge of January. Okay, so I have this scrap piece of wood, which I'm going to use as a glue block. Uh, it has a tenon on it already, three and three quarters, which is the right size to fit into this set of jaws. So if I tighten that up in there, I'll tighten that up and then I'll true this off and then I'll glue my bowl blank to that with wood glue and then also with um, with hot glue around the edges. Then I can turn the back side of the clock first. Okay, so I'm gonna just use regular carpenter's glue to glue the glue block onto the bowl blank and then use the tailstock to apply pressure. That's pretty good, I'm happy with that. So I'm just using pull cuts with the wing of the bowl gouge just to true it up because it is warped a little bit. So this is indeed black, medium thick Starbond CA glue. Uh, the previous video people were asking what it is. Um, so this is super glue essentially and it has a pigment in it I guess. It is um, colored black when you receive it. Um, if you go to my website www.woodsleysummercraft.ca, if you live in Canada you'll get a 10% discount if you click on the link and you go to their website and you use my coupon code which is uh, WS10 and that goes for all of their products okay so it's always good to double check your measurements of your chuck jaws I should almost have it written down after all these years but I don't um, this being the size of a tenon if I was making a tenon and this being the jaw area and this being a mortise for the larger set of jaws which is about four and three quarters of an inch so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to start working this down so that there's maybe a hmm, quarter of an inch of wood at the base maybe a little bit more and then I can work that from the front uh, so maybe three eighths of an inch of wood at the front of the bowl and then um, from here on out I can reduce it significantly also Okay, so that is the backside turned. Um, 
and that gives me a nice place to grab this with my chuck as well. So I just need to get this all sanded up and finished on the inside and then I can turn it around and then we can do the front which will include doing the drill bit in the center for the uh, mechanism to push through for the handles. Handles? It's not a bike. It's a clock. They're hands. Okay, so this is sanded to 100 grit at the moment and quite often what I'll do is I'll wet sand using oil. But this particular piece, I feel like I'm going to finish it with a spray lacquer followed by Yorkshire grit and Hampshire sheen. Um, so it's going to be kind of really glossy, like super glossy. That's the idea with this particular piece. Already seeing the beauty in this piece of walnut. I absolutely love walnut. Okay, so this is now sealed with the sanding sealer. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to spray it with um, with clear glass lacquer. Very fine coats, several fine coats. All right, so I've just kind of smoothed this out with the scouring pad and then cleaned it off with the paper towel. Now I'm going to put the, I think it's the fourth coat of uh, spray lacquer onto this clock. I've now got this reverse chucked. As you can see, the jaws of the chuck are in expansion mode into the area where the clock mechanism will be. And the next course of action will be to remove the glue block and I'm simply going to turn that away and then chew up this front face. front of the clock trued up essentially it needs sanding and it needs a little bit more detail work but what I'm going to do is cut this corner off because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this bicycle chain wrap around the outside of the bowl. I've got this disc brake which is going to be the center of the clock and then what I'm going to be using are these rivets which I purchased from Lee Valley quite a while ago which I used to repair some leather work on my tool pouch and the back side of these rivets are perfect to identify the hour on the clock face so there's enough holes that every other hole is 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock and so on and so forth. Okay so I've got this marked with this set of calipers and I'm just gonna kinda guesstimate and touch this side, not this side and see if it lines up with this side. So I'm going to start off smaller. That's pretty close, so I'm going to work this down about maybe an eighth of an inch to this mark, and then uh, see if this fits in, and then adjust it accordingly. Okay, so I just took this down a little bit more because the threaded piece of the clock mechanism that comes through the hole is 3 8 long. I don't actually have the mechanism right now, I've got to pick that up. Um, so I'm hoping that I got it right. I'm kind of, kind of guessing really, but I think we're good. I think we're good. I measured it to be about less than a quarter of an inch right here, so we should be okay. Um, but then we have the thickness of the steel as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to concentrate on this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to texture this almost like a tire and then I'm going to cut into this, which is going to be the, um, the chain. So we're going to be using the Robert Sorby texturing tool. 
right here to create some texture on this rim, almost like a tire, I guess. We'll see how that goes. In there. Doesn't exactly look like a tire tread, but it does look pretty nice. I'm almost inclined to leave it right there. So what I do need to do now is remove some of this edge for the chain. Now the chain has got oil on it, so I'm gonna have to clean this with uh, DNH alcohol to get some of the oil off of this as much as I can. Uh, and I think this is just gonna get hot glued into the slot that I put around the rim of this. So I'm gonna try and punch out this rivet to shorten up the chain. So let's see if this works. Okay, looks like it might work. Okay, so I managed to remove the excess chain simply with a punch and a hammer resting upon a nut so that the, uh, the pin had somewhere to go. And then I also kind of tapped it out with a nail a little bit and then pried it off with pliers. And then now we have both ends of the chain like this, which will accommodate the um, the extra pin that it comes with that joins them together, if I can find it. Okay, so I've got some denatured alcohol. I'm just gonna soak this rag in it, paper towel, a little bit, and then just kind of remove that oil as much as I can. Probably would be better if I soaked it, but I'm not going to, I'm just gonna wipe it off. picked up some uh, clock mechanisms for me at Lee Valley. Um, I, I just put it in there just to make sure that the threads stick out on the front face side of it which is where the nut and the uh, hands will go. So I got lucky because like I said I was just uh, kind of guessing and I measured it with a, with a with a ruler. Not even a ruler, I just kind of had a guess really, but I, I figured it was about a quarter of an inch, so we're sticking out enough for the nut and everything, the washer and the nut, uh, and then the hands will go in front of the uh, brake disc on the face. Okay, so I'm gonna take the scouring pad, just to gently cut the surface back. Okay, I think that's good. What I'm gonna do now is use the Yorkshire grip to uh, cut the finish back. on the top and the back edge. I'm not going to worry about the back on the inside. The back on the inside is sprayed with lacquer, but I'm not going to bring it to the same finish. I don't think it's necessary. We'll go with the microfine as well after this. And then with a clean towel, Remove any leftover residue. So I'm just gonna take a, I have a copper wire brush. I'm just gently gonna pull that wax out in the direction of the texture. And then with a clean towel, Okay, so I'm going to take the Hampshire Sheen black embellishing wax and lightly put it into those areas. I'm just going to pull out that texture a little bit better than it already is and it's going to make it that much more noticeable. I think it's the right thing to do to highlight that texture so you'll see it from across the room. Whereas if I don't do that, you'll only really see it when you're close up to it. making sure to circle, making going in all directions, making sure to fill up all of the texture. And this will, if I do the pyro as well, it's gonna kind of complement each other.
just taking off the excess got the 12 o'clock in its spot I'm gonna do the 6 o'clock which is right there then I'm gonna glue those in and then I'm gonna glue then I'm gonna draw the rest out once it's held into the right position okay so they glued in very nicely and it's held the um, it's actually a brake pad material it's held that into place so now I can go ahead and drill the rest of the holes and glue the rest of those buttons in before I put the chain on and then the mechanism can go in I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue this all the way around the rim try not to make a mess here easier said than done and thanks for watching that was a lot of fun to turn this is my entry into Hugh's challenge for January of 2021 that's Hugh from wouldn't it be nice uh, he's on YouTube and he set a challenge for you, us YouTubers to turn a clock for the month of January. So there is my challenge. Uh, challenge accepted. There's my entry. Hope you like, share and subscribe. Take care and I'll see you again for the next turning project. You take care now. Bye.